This morning we're in Cabus Nook. It sounds like some sort of medieval. It's, it's a strange name. Torture thing, doesn't it? Take him to the Cabus Nook. Popular with campers and caravanners. Yeah, just on our right hand side, there's like a caravan site and there's like temporary camping. It is a really nice place and we yeah. did more here on the way up to Lancaster uh, the first time round. But today we're going back south and we're going to Garstang. We've also got some things to pick up from our Amazon locker there. Yes. And what else we got to do? Uh, oh yeah, we've got a kayak to collect. According to the sign, which is literally right next to our boat, it's four miles from here at Cabersnook. Cabersnook through to Garstang. Are we ready? I think so. Onward! Bye! On a day like today, it's difficult to imagine that the Lancaster Canal was built exclusively for industrial traffic over 200 years ago. It was known as the Black and White Canal because it used to carry coal north from the Lancashire coal fields and limestone south from Cumbria. Nowadays there's hundreds of holiday cottages, leisure and caravan parks all dotted alongside the canal. And the cargo laden working boats of the 19th century have all but gone, replaced with hundreds of pleasure cruisers, narrow boats and fleets of hire boats. Being disconnected from the main canal network and hugging the coast of Morecambe Bay as it does, it feels more like a holiday destination than an industrial super highway of the Victorian era. And this sunshine is definitely helping. We've just passed Bridge 69 on our way from Cabersnook, Cabersnook uh, to Garstang and the smell. Describe, uh, describe the smell. Uh, <laughs> Imagine poorly cows. Yeah, it smells like poorly cows. Like poorly cows. Poorly cows. But like, oh, not very nice at all. There's two large marinas as we approach Garstang, and it's here where you get a sense of just how different this canal is to the rest of the network. There's hundreds of these GRP cruisers, or glass reinforced plastic cruisers. They're lined the jetties, and most of them are used for days out and holidays. I've never seen as many of these cruisers on one canal before. I'm not usually a fan of concrete bridges, but this stylish 1920s white bridge has just got loads of character. It was built to transfer water from the Barnacre Reservoir, which is a couple of miles northeast of here, over to Blackpool and the Fylde Coast, that's about 16 miles west of Garstang. It really stands out though, doesn't it? It's like a gateway to the town. Just as we come into Garstang, we've stopped at the boater services and joined back up with our good friends Pat and Eileen on their narrowboat done working. We're going to spend some time with these guys before we head back across the Ribble Link in a couple of days. But before we hit the pub for some lunch, we need to fill up with water, empty the toilets and get rid of some rubbish. We're here. We are in Garstang. In fact, we're just by the River Wire, and that behind us is the Wire Aqueduct. Uh, it's 110 foot long, carries the Lancaster Canal 34 feet up above the River Wire, and it was built by John Rennie in 1797. Beautiful structure. I'm getting quite geeky about aqueducts. Just a touch. <laughs> 
so might not be looking my best today. I had a bottle of cider last night. Apparently, I was last seen doing showing the other boaters how to do handstands. On One bottle of cider on the towpath. One bottle of cider, and I've still got my hat on because my hair's still not growing back, <laughs> and it seems to be growing back white instead it is. of brown. It is. So the hat's staying on until it's grown back and died. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this is the River Wire, Wire Aqueduct, and we're moored about, what, about 50 feet? I'd say about 100 yards. That way, between the Wire Aqueduct and the bridge near the marina. Right, we are going to get some shopping and yes. have a walk around town. Are you we'll ready? We'll show them what it's like when we've done. Ladies first. Ladies first. <laughs> Garstang's a lovely old town. Nice and quiet, but there's plenty of shops and facilities for us to stock up on essentials before we head off back to Preston. We've got to return over the Ribble Link tomorrow, but before we leave, I've had something special delivered. So after many weeks of nagging and favours, Sean has finally come round to the idea that I can have a kayak. Kayak! Uh, so I got this one the other day and as you can see it sits on the boat really well. Uh, where the ladder rack is I've got two straps, they're like lockable ratchet straps. So kind of just lock it round each strap, fasten it on, pull it tight, lock it and then I've got a separate little security device. Shall I tell you where it is? No I'm not going to tell you where it is. It's like a vibration detector so if anybody moves the kayak in the night or tries to move it an alarm will go off in the kayak and inside in the boat so I can come running out and grab the thieves. So first thing we're going to do is try and get it off the roof. I think it was always inevitable that I was going to end up with a kayak. I always enjoyed biking. That was a really good way for me to get out and about, escape the house, escape work, and just be able to clear the mind, focus on where I was going, everything around me, the quietness. And I think kayaking is just like the canal version of biking, isn't it? It's getting out and about into the countryside, no one else around, nice and peaceful, and it's a good form of exercise too. I think exercise really helps. I mean, yeah, it, it physically makes you fitter, but I think being fitter physically in your body also helps you feel fitter in, in your brain, if that makes sense. I don't know whether it's just kind of getting away from it and not concentrating on the things that stress you, that gives you that escape or a combination of the exercise, I, I don't know. I can't explain it. I do know it works. So this is helping. Getting a right sweat on now. The main reason we decided to change our lives like this was to try and make a positive difference to my mental health. Exercise plays a big part in that. It amazed me when we started blogging our journey on YouTube just how many people share similar issues to mine. And thousands of people got in touch to offer support and share their experiences with me. It's really opened my eyes and shown what a massive problem mental health issues really are. Colin's looking forward to today. Colin isn't looking forward to today. We spent a lovely six or seven weeks on the Lancaster Canal, but today it's time to go. So we're heading back towards Preston and the Millennium Ribble Link. I even hate saying it. Why? It's just, uh, back to Tarleton and Rufford. 
so we've done all the checks we need to do this morning we've done the engine checks uh, there's loads of weed in the weed hatch that's the thing you'll find if you come to the Lancaster at this time of year especially Ooh. towards Preston there is a lot of weed lots of weed so we've cleared the weed hatch uh, I've checked the oil, I've checked the gearbox oil, uh, checked the belts, checked the coolant levels. Everything's been checked to make sure that we're good for the Ribble Link. Uh, we've got the anchor out and we had a bit of a discussion. Sean used to be in the Navy, so he should know how to deploy an anchor. I was a chef. <laughs> 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 so the anchor's out and ready just in case we need it. You never know, you might get an engine failure on that strong tidal part of the Ribble. So the anchor is out, we've got 30 metres of chain and rope and we've got it attached to the T-stud on the bow. We've also got it secondary uh, attached. And we've also got it <laughs> secondary attached, uh, just in case we're going a bit too fast and it pulls and shears the T-stud off. Hopefully, <laughs> none of that's going to happen, but I am rubbing my hands a little it, bit nervously. It won't happen. I know, I know, but I'm just, I'm just like a nervous Nelly, that's all. <laughs> The tide time today is at 10 to 2 and we've got to be down in Preston for 20 past 9. Yes. Uh, it's like usually four, four and a half hours before the high tide. So we've got to get down Savit Brook and be waiting uh, and then get across the Ribble back onto the Douglas and back into Talton Lock, which should be sometime later this afternoon. It will. Not should. I need another coffee again. <laughs> Come on, let's get a coffee. <laughs> We've both really loved the Lancaster Canal. It's felt more like a summer holiday, you know, like a week of rain and then half a day of sunshine. <laughs> As we get closer to Preston though, the scenery changes from this open countryside that we've gotten used to back to a more urban environment. And it's not long before we're back at the basin at the top of the staircase locks where we've met up with the other four boats who are making the crossing with us today. If you remember back to our journey up here a few weeks ago, we can't turn round at the bottom of the locks because that pound's just too narrow. So we've all got to reverse down the staircase and then at the bottom, we're heading off in the right direction back towards Savick Brook. It's nice to see the same team as well from the Canal and River Trust. They're here to help us make the crossing safely. I'm not nervous, honestly. We've been followed, so we've got to get a move on. <laughs> uh, so we've done the staircase flight of three locks which takes us from the Lancaster Canal back down onto the Millennium Ribble Link Navigation. What and happened it, there? You got it right. And it looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> so we've now got eight more locks. Is it? Six of it. Five more locks. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think I'd know this, doing it once before. We've got five more locks between here and the proper Savick Brook, which takes us out onto the River Ribble. Lock four done. Yay! So there's two boats in front of us, two uh, narrow boats. There's us two narrow boats, us and another one you can't see. And then we've got a cruiser behind us. So the plan is, is as each two narrow boats go down each lock, we the last the boat going through leaves a paddle open to refill the lock. So by the time the next two boats get to it, the locks are already full, so we can get through it, leave a paddle open for the cruiser to come in behind us. That's the plan. <laughs> and then by the time we've got down these four locks uh, towards Savick Brook, we're all gonna meet up again. And then as soon as we can get under that bridge and onto the Ribble, off we go! Yay, onward! We've been lucky today, because if it's too windy, they don't let you go. And earlier in the week it was forecast to be like 20 mile an hour winds which is enough to stop the crossing we're on about 8 to 10 mile an hour so we're all right at the moment i've also been given some advice as well on how the tides are working on the return route apparently <laughs> the advice is is as we come out of savick brook towards the ribble is to really power up and then obviously go right onto the Ribble back towards the River Douglas. And if and we haven't got enough power... Whee! Preston, here we come. Preston. 
and apparently that's happened. The guy who told us the story has done this loads of times before and he says he's lost count of the amount of times boats come out of Savick Brook, get caught by the Ribble Tide and taken on to Preston. So we'll bear that one in mind, but we'll see what happens first when we get there. <laughs> We are in the brook, Savick Brook. Uh, that was lock eight. Next one is lock nine, which is the uh, rotating sea lock. I keep meaning to say revolving sea lock. <laughs> so when we came up, the water in Savick Brook itself was really low and it was dropping. We could see it dropping as we came up. And we were panicking that we were gonna get grounded. And the CRT man has just kindly let us know that there's actually less water in it now than there was when we came up. <laughs> this is where I start biting my nails. So the first of one of the really tight bends and Sean's using his bow thruster. To be honest, I think I would be using the bow thruster on this one. Here we go then. Just been given the wave from the CRT man and I think Sean's going to hit the side. No, I'm not. <laughs> and we're off. So we're just getting to the end of Savick Brook, literally about 200 yards from the mouth of the Ribble and we can really start to feel the tide coming in against us. So we're doing about 1400 revs at the moment and we're struggling. We're probably doing about one and a half, two miles an hour. As soon as we get, as you just heard, as soon as we get close to the mouth of the Ribble, we're really gonna have to power up. Otherwise we're just gonna get swept eastwards towards Preston. We don't want that, we wanna go west. Are you ready? I'm ready. Today's tide on the River Ribble is one of the highest of the year and it's coming in fast. The current's dangerously strong, so we've got to try and get our narrowboat out of Savick Brook and turned into the oncoming tide as soon as we can. It would be easier if we could come out of the brook at a slight angle, but we can't cut that corner because of the shallow bank and a few boats have been caught out like that before and ended up grounded. Sean is giving the engine its maximum power. Our 42 horsepower engine's roaring, but we can't get the boat to turn. And as soon as that current hits us, we just start drifting the wrong way towards Preston. And the boat behind us caught this footage as we were fighting to straighten Silver Fox and try to move forward against the current. You can see the water rushing up and past the boat. We've got almost 3,000 revs on the engine, but the tide's just so strong, we're not moving at all. Wow, what a rush! I didn't think we were going to do that. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, we managed to get the boat facing the right way and we do start to move, albeit at a snail's pace, but in the right direction. The boats behind us saw the trouble we had getting out into the current and they started drifting a little bit too, but they managed to cut the corner just enough to get the boat angled without risking grounding on that shallow bank. We got a bit scared for the young guy in the GRP cruiser though. He thought he was off with the current and so did we, but he managed to pull it back and after a few tense minutes, all of us had made it safely onto the River Ribble and we're now heading west back towards the River Douglas. Yeah, this is the best bit because the tide's fully in, so we're not 
fighting against the current. We're back on the River Douglas and we're now heading back south towards Tarleton. So it's like the reverse of last time. Remember when we came out of Tarleton Lock on the way up to Lancaster? We were fighting the incoming tide. This time we're going to be fighting the outgoing tide. So it's still going to be a struggle, I think, I reckon. So we've got about three miles to do yet. So by the time we get close to Tarleton, I reckon the tide will be on its way out and we'll be fighting to get into that lock. I have this scenario, we're bombing along at two and a half thousand revs. I think it's going to be easy. You get into the lock and you just smash straight through the lock and <laughs> end up in Wigan. <laughs> have you calmed down now anyway? I've calmed down a little bit. I hate this. He was panicking. Now most sane people will probably not mind this. There's a, a convoy of boats behind us who are probably having a whale of a time. I don't like this. And we're not doing it again. <laughs> Next year. <No. laughs> this is the nicest bit so far. <laughs> it's nice and calm. Tide's fully in. And we're bombing along at about three miles an hour on about 1500 revs, RPM, whatever you want to call it. The sun's out and we're a bit sheltered from that wind now. Yeah. So it's feeling a little bit better. Uh, the other four boats are behind us. We've just phoned Tarleton Lock just to let them know we're on its way. So the lock should be ready for us. And hopefully this tide doesn't start coming out too fast. So we can get to Tarleton Lock, get straight in it. We're just talking about having a tandoori tonight. Oh, yum, 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 yum. To make up for the stress. I'll do stress every day for a tandoori. Oh, I would, yes. <laughs> I can't, I can't start to describe how different the River Douglas is. Yeah. We're it's not so peaceful. We're not far from Tarleton Lock now. We're probably about five minutes away. And as you can see, it's almost still. Tide's fully in. Sun's out. The wind's dropping. We're sheltered from it. And it just feels like a completely different river, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So I'm not sure if it's like this for all the downward journeys from Lancaster to Tarleton but going up to Lancaster it seems to be the River Douglas that you're fighting coming out of Tarleton Lock and then it seems to ease down as you get on the Ribble doesn't it but it's the opposite way around coming back you fight the Ribble This is more like it, we're back on a canal. Smiles back, <laughs> heart rate's down. Whew. I am a bit super sensitive to it, but I don't know, I, I don't, I, yeah, yeah. What do you reckon? <laughs> He's fine, he takes it all in his stride. Yeah. I'm glad to be back on the main network anyway, back to two and a half mile an hour. I'm still a bit fidgety, but I'm sure I'll be fine. I need a bath and a massage. <laughs> you need a bath and a massage. <laughs> so we've come out of Talton Lock. We're just now heading back towards Talton Visitor Moorings, where we're going to... Uh, it's, it's supposed to be a, a really good, well-recommended tandoori takeaway restaurant. So we're going to treat ourselves to a tandoori takeaway tonight. Yes, we are. 
and some wine. <laughs> and then tomorrow, well, tomorrow and Sunday, we're going to have a couple of days off and we're going to chill on the Rufford for a couple of days yep. before we start the next part of our journey. New canal, new direction. Where will it be? We're not telling you. Tune in <laughs> next week to find out. <laughs> it's the Leeds and Liverpool. <laughs> Next time on Britain by Narrowboat, join us back on the Leeds and Liverpool Canal in Parbold, where we've got a new destination in mind, 90 locks away. I check out the history surrounding the famous Wigan Pier and discover the story of the Pitbrow Lasses before we buddy up with another narrowboat couple to climb the flight of 21 Wigan locks, heading out towards the hills of the Pennines. Mm -hmm.